Afternoon all, and thanks once again for joining us for this daily update. I'm joined today by the Chief Executive of the Western New South Wales Local Health District, Scott McLaughlin, and Assistant Commissioner Brett Greentree, who's here from New South Wales Police. I'm Dougal Saunders. Up until eight o'clock last night, we've got 40 new cases across the Western New South Wales Local Health District, 13 that are known to be infectious in the community, and Scott can talk a bit more to that shortly. Dubbo has 25 new cases, Burke 5, Narromine 4, Orange 4 and Gaduga 2. There have uh, been some adjustments again to total numbers across the, the health district. So that new number for the health district is 445 and out of that Dubbo has 346 in total. For the far west today, nine new cases at Wilcannia, which is obviously of concern. Testing, again, not huge numbers across the entire region. Only 3,700 people were tested in the past 24 hours. And again, uh, we're asking you to come forward. This is a line that Scott and I have been saying for a long time now. Please come forward with any symptoms, even the mildest of symptoms, or if you have any concerns. And those venues of concern, if you've been to or had someone in your family to one of those uh, we're encouraging you to think about that and come forward and, and get tested. There is a regular update on the venues of concern on the New South Wales Health website. Please keep in touch with that and make sure you're also letting family and friends know that information so you can make sure they're aware of when to come forward for testing as well. Now on testing, uh, there have been just a couple of tweaks to things overnight. Uh, so West Dubbo at Piney Park, the testing clinic that was there, is now closed, um, partly around uh, consolidating at some of our larger clinics, including at the showground, uh, and really making sure we get some of those numbers up, as opposed to splitting some of the resources. So uh, that will be open again if it is needed at West Dubbo, but at this point in time, uh, that clinic is now closed for testing. In Dubbo, there's Monera Plaza, there's Dubbo Showground, uh, and obviously other um, sites like the uh, respiratory clinic with appointments. Um, but if you can also share that with people who may have been looking to go to West Dubbo, that is closed as of today. Uh, full details again on the post of, of exactly where clinics are, but Narromine, Mudgee all have their same clinics. Slight changes to times here and there as well. As far as vaccination, the pop-up happening at Dubbo Regional Theatre and Convention Centre again today. People are lined up right now waiting for their vaccination. Now that does close at 4.30 this afternoon don't turn up at 4.30, you won't get in. The line normally is anywhere between an hour and two hours. Um, so, so really you probably need to plan on being here by 2.30 or three at the latest to get in that line to make sure you're getting your jab today. Otherwise, be aware it is moving tomorrow. As we talked about the last couple of days, it's been at the Theatre and Convention Centre just due to wet weather. Piney Park is now being rebuilt as we speak. It will be operating across the weekend, so Saturday, and Sunday at Piney Park, the walk-in free clinic, nine until 4.30. Again, tell your friends, tell your family, make sure you get there. This is a big opportunity for people right across Dubbo to be there and get a jab. Uh, with that, you do need to bring uh, maybe, maybe a chair, a light chair, if, you, if you're concerned about standing. There are toilets there. Bring some water, bring a hat, bring some sunscreen, some food, something to occupy the kids if you're taking them along as well. Um, Scott can talk a bit more about vaccination numbers actually today as well with some really encouraging news uh, about how things are going right across our region. Other things to take, Medicare card if you have it. If you don't have Medicare, take your individual health identifier number. And if you don't have that, make sure you have some sort of ID that will be required. And of course, we've got the ADF teams and the health teams right across the district again today. They've been doing great numbers. I mean, the feedback has been uh, extraordinarily good. So well done to everyone who's turned out at places like Narromine yesterday. They did another 500 odd, really good stuff. Trangy happening today and tomorrow. Uh, Brewarrina for the next three days and Peak Hill happening today as well. Uh, we'll have some uh, more details for locations for next week as soon as we do. Mudgee, for example, still working on the finer details around that, but I can tell you that uh, Golgong is happening at the Memorial Hall. That starts on Monday from 10, and at Ningen, the Showground Pavilion on Monday from 11. Uh, so make sure you have it in your diary. Again, tell your friends and family. They're running for two or three days each, depending on where you are. Make sure you check that out. And the other good news is Transport for New South Wales is teaming up with community transport providers 
essentially across the entire district. If you need help getting into a vaccination clinic, whether it's one of the pop-ups or a, a clinic at the hospital or, or at your doctor, there is a, a link that we're putting up right now to numbers for every part of our region. So check out this Facebook post. There'll be a link there for transport. Uh, if you can't get yourself there and you need help, there'll be a number for your region. Uh, so make sure you check it out. And again, share that with your family and friends who might need it. And please, we've mentioned this a couple of times, if you have an appointment and don't need to go to a walk-in clinic, there's a couple of things you can do. One is keep your appointment and leave the walk-in clinic for somebody else. If you decide to go to the walk-in clinic, wherever you are, please cancel your appointment, whether it's your GP, whether it's through the Vax clinic in somewhere like Dubbo, or whether it's a pharmacy, we really need to free up those appointments for other people. So please do the right thing on that. Now talking about booking, there are still plenty of appointments coming through, particularly for AstraZeneca. Uh, use the eligibility checker, book your opportunity. That's now of course moved to the showground at the, at the uh, Woolpack Pavilion. That's off Winjiwara Street near Chelmsford Street and all access is now off Winjiwara Street. If you're getting tested, it's at the main gates. If you're getting a, a vaccination through the, the booking, it's near Chelmsford Street. So bear that in mind. Uh, they're, they're basically telling you when you get there, but if you bear it in mind before you get there, it makes everyone's life a little bit easier. Eligibility, eligibility checker is the way to go if you're online or 1800 571 155. And look, GPs and pharmacists, again, are doing a fantastic job. So many opportunities with GPs to book a vaccination. Keep doing that. Keep talking to your local pharmacy as well uh, and make sure you're actually lining up in the best and quickest possible way for you and your family. Wellington, the Vax Clinic, they're going extremely well. Tendal for Monday to Friday, so not open across the weekend, but another busy day today. There's another 100 or 150 odd doses planned for today. Bookings on 6845 5423 for next week. If you can get through, bear in mind that line is extremely busy. But over the last few days, 595 Pfizer vaccines have been done at that clinic. Massive thumbs up to the crew down at Wellington doing that. Uh, and some information I got from, uh, from WAX this morning, they've done over 900 doses of AstraZeneca since April. So there's been huge take up. Well done Wellington, keep coming forward and getting vaccinated. That's what we love to see. Also got a shout out today actually for Wellington and this was uh, Bronwyn who passed this on to me. Thanks Bronwyn for, for passing it on. To Dr Jane Lovell from Melbourne originally uh, and Dr Richard Green who's from the Sunshine Coast. Both have been here and both have stayed in our region to ensure that Wellington Health Service, for example, can continue to run at full tilt. Uh, they've also been doing shifts at the Dubbo Hospital. They're missing their own families, missing their own friends. They've stayed here. Uh, and for Dr Jane and Dr Richard, it's a, it's a massive thank you. The entire community of Wellington and Dubbo are thankful for what you're doing. And the health service at Wellington particularly wanted to make sure you both got a shout out. So thank you very much for what you're doing. Again, there's plenty of information on today's post. Keep looking back through comments, look at the original post itself, keep trying to find information. Most of what you need to know is on our daily post. Uh, so try and find out. If you do need to reach out, that's fine, but try first. Uh, Scott will have a bit more detail about some of the positives looking forward, and Brett will talk a bit more about the policing operations. Remember, keep supporting each other, and we'll get through this together. Thank you. Thanks, Dougal, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, again, another concerning day for Western New South Wales with 40 new cases identified to 8 p.m. yesterday. That takes us to a total in Western New South Wales of 445 cases. Now, the vast majority of those are in Dubbo, but we do have expanding numbers in uh, some of our uh, smaller rural and some remote communities. So we saw uh, 25 cases in Dubbo, um, five in Burke, four in Orange, four in Narromine and two in Gadooga. Um, we know that the um, four in uh, Burke, uh, sorry, the, the five in Burke and two in Gadooga are all household contacts of a known case. Um, we're still doing a lot of work to investigate uh, around 35, sorry, 32 of those uh, 40 cases um, with our contact tracers working around the clock to try and uh, track down some of those people and um, have the conversation with them about their illness and um, where they've been and, and any risk to the community. So please stay tuned to that. Uh, we know that 13 out of the 40 cases were definitely infectious to the community. Now, that, that's a daily ongoing challenge for us. We know that people are in our communities infectious in potentially all of our communities. It's a, a time where we've all got to be very vigilant. Anyone standing next to us, behind you, your kids coming home at the end of the day, 
or the neighbours over the fence could be the next person that you infect or someone that infects you. And so this is time for us in every community right across the region to be really vigilant around this. Um, we've now got uh, a lot more venues of concern that have been notified over the last uh, 24 hours, particularly in both uh, Bathurst and Dubbo. Um, so eight venues of concern in Bathurst with a lot of times in those venues and uh, five in Dubbo. And so please can I ask everyone to go and look at those. If you have been in those locations, follow the advice and uh, quickly get tested and um, stay in isolation. Um, those will continue to evolve, particularly as our contact traces in the next 24 hours um, get in contact with a lot of those new cases. Uh, we've seen a uh, positive sewerage test in Ningen in the last uh, 24 hours, and so to the community of Ningen, please come and get tested. The local health service has um, testing ability this afternoon from 2pm. Uh, please place a phone call ahead and, uh, and come and get tested if you've got any signs and symptoms, however mild, or any concerns, then don't hesitate in the community of Ningen. We've had uh, other sewerage tests go off and no surprises in these in Gulagambone, Walgut, Mudgee and, and Bathurst where we've already got uh, cases identified in those locations. Again, uh, very disappointingly, we saw a dive in the testing numbers yesterday um, down to 3,700. Now that's the lowest we've seen in weeks and so um, it's really concerning to see this continual drop. Um, there was only four days ago we were up above 10,000 um, tests a day across the whole of the region. So can I please urge everyone, it is time, don't mess around with this. Don't let sniffles get into full-blown COVID or other problems. Don't let the little scratchy throat that you've got um, go for a couple of hours. Go and get tested quickly. It's not a time to mess around in our region. If you've been tested once, then don't hesitate coming back for a second time if you've had symptoms develop. If you've got any other concerns, then this is time to please come and get tested. So yesterday I saw only 1,500 people in Dubbo uh, being tested, um, 100 people in Mudgee, uh, Bathurst 489, Orange 806, um, Parks 132, uh, Wellington 65, Burke 105 and Forbes 96. And there's a lot of testing available at all of our facilities right across the region. So your local health service and hospital um, can test you in all of the small rural communities. So please uh, phone ahead and get a test if you've got any signs and symptoms, however mild. All of the testing uh, drive-through clinics will remain open over the weekend um, and so please uh, come and look for those opportunities if you do need to get tested. Um, we've now been able to stand up uh, four dedicated mobile testing teams in Dubbo. There's a couple of locations and areas in Dubbo that we know we've got uh, no numbers of cases growing where we've wanted to uh, get some in-home testing services available. Um, if you do need access to that, if you're disabled or can't leave your home for a range of reasons, then uh, access that through the 1300 066 055 number. We've also got some uh, mobile testing available in Orange. Um, that's available through the um, Orange Aboriginal Medical Service and our local um, teams through calling 63939013. And in the next 24 hours, we'll have additional mobile testing available in the community of Bathurst as well. And so we're continually stepping up to try and help people that might be uh, vulnerable and uh, not able to, to leave their homes uh, to get tested with, uh, with quick turnarounds for those. Um, in terms of our patients in hospital, um, we've got uh, 15 patients in hospital, uh, five of those in intensive care and three of those now are ventilated. Um, Twelve patients in total in, in Dubbo and three in, in Orange. Uh, we've grown again our community um, care and specialist teams going into the home with over 420 um, patients in our uh, care, care in the community um, program. That'll continue to grow as we've got growing case numbers right across the region. It's, a, I'd say, an exceptional um, step from our, our clinicians and our teams to get into the homes to help people stay at home safely, particularly when they're in isolation, and support them with all of the other um, things that they might need to, to live healthy in the home. Uh, we've seen a um, drop in the number of healthcare workers um, in the last 24 hours, and this is pleasing to see. Um, a lot of our healthcare workers started to return to work from their period of isolation. So we've now only got 80 healthcare workers, down from about 150 uh, yesterday. So that's been a pleasing addition and boost to, to our workforce to see them able to return to the workforce. Now that'll continue to happen as we have um, people come out of their isolation period and able to return to the workforce. Um, 
Um, on the vaccination front, uh, again, very positive news. We had a record day yesterday with over 2,000 people vaccinated through the ADF clinics and our dedicated um, hubs in Dubbo, Orange and Bathurst. Um, that will continue to increase in coming days as we get out into more and more communities. Um, please look out for that uh, schedule and the opportunities in, in your community for vaccination programs. But pleasingly, we've also seen over 17,000 doses of, uh, of Pfizer delivered into the region from the Commonwealth coming into the GPs, the Aboriginal Medical Services, the respiratory clinics, and a range of other vaccination programs like the pharmacies that are kicking off more and more every day of the week. And so with big volumes of uh, Pfizer and AstraZeneca coming into those primary care settings, um, please look for those opportunities. The ADF clinics and their vaccination hubs aren't the only opportunity. Um, we know there are only a limited period of time in in a lot of those communities and so please there's a lot of vaccination opportunities out there across the region at the moment. The uh, drive-through vaccination um, clinic has started in Dubbo, now that's a booked program, it's an adaptation from our walk-in clinic in Monera Plaza and so we'll be updating with more information on that. Um, there's a lot of additional vaccination being able to be delivered through that in the uh, time frames up till 4.30pm every day and so we'll continue to update information on that in the next 24 hours. Um, a lot of the uh, the other um, opportunities in Wellington will remain. Uh, great to hear Dougal's uh, stories of the increased numbers of uh, both AstraZeneca and Pfizer in, in Wellington able to be vaccinated at the moment. So please come to those two locations where there's vaccine available. So listen, I'll pause here and hand over to um, to Danny um, Greentree, sorry, Brett Greentree, who's the Assistant Commissioner for, uh, for Police. Uh, thank you, Brett. Good afternoon everybody. Uh, firstly, from a policing perspective, uh, disappointing over the last 24 hours, in excess of 150 infringements right across the western region. But of great concern is uh, 50 of those in the Dubbo area. Um, that was an increase from about 30 the uh, 24 hours prior to that. Um, on a positive note, I suppose uh, we've seen more compliance with masks, but we have seen uh, less compliance in terms of people uh, who should be staying at home. should add that uh, police are out patrolling um, day and night. We are doing compliance checks and also we're receiving uh, hundreds of uh, calls right across the region with regards to crime stoppers. So my message there is uh, it's not just the police watching at your neighbours, it's the community and uh, we thank them for alerting us to people who aren't complying with the orders. Uh, also, areas of concern, Orange, there was in excess of 25, I think, uh, infringements in that area. Uh, majority of those uh, for not staying at home. Uh, Burke, uh, in excess of 10, I think, from memory. Again, staying at home, breaching staying at home orders in terms of infringements. Uh, I will say of, um, a real positive is Will Kenya, uh, 60 compliance checks uh, over the last 24 hours and no breaches detected. So that is a really you know, I know we focus a little bit on negatives at time, but that's a really positive story. And thank you to the community of Wilkenya for uh, uh, for doing that in the community that are assisting us uh, along the way there. So the police operation will continue. It is continuing 24-7. Uh, we have uh, extra police in town. We have the Defence Force assisting us. Um, so that is ongoing. And uh, I'd like to see the infringements go down. Um, and not like they were the last 24 hours. So I'd ask everybody, please, in the community, uh, do it for yourself, uh, your family and also the community. From an emergency management perspective, uh, there is the Region uh, Emergency Management Operations Centre set up here in Dubbo looking after the entire region. Uh, your emergency services workers are really working 24-7 uh, with their partners in, in order to get us through this. Uh, there is local emergency management committees sitting every day in your communities doing what they can to assist. Uh, from a police perspective, uh, we've been assisting the vaccination rollout with our partners in health and also the uh, Australian Defence Force and that's been going really well right across the region. Uh, we've been doing a number of wellbeing checks. It's not just compliance and again I want to focus on some positives. We do a number of wellbeing checks and they've been well received right across the region with our Defence Force partners. They will continue. Uh, we are there to support as well but we will not um, uh, take, take kindly to people who are not complying with the orders because it puts us all at risk. Uh, finally, can I say that I've been in town for a week uh, assisting with the Emergency Operations Centre and I am just uh, absolutely amazed at the resilience of the towns in the Western Region. I'm a Western Region boy myself, but uh, I am just amazed at the leadership 
the cooperation and the strength of these communities. Uh, we have a minority who are not complying with the orders uh, and they're being dealt with very, very seriously. But the large majority of people are doing the right thing. So I thank you, thank you for your support for those who are doing the right thing. Uh, the sooner we, uh, we stay at home, we get through this and we all come out of lockdown. Thank you. Do you want to stay there, Brett, takes a long question for yeah. you first up? Thanks, Brett. Uh, could anyone who has questions for Brett raise their little digital hands now? Riley from the Central Western Daily. Yep. Hey there. Um, yeah, so just speaking on those orange numbers about the breaches and sort of fines over the last couple of weeks, over the last week. Um, yeah, we've seen there's been about 30 odd, um, you know, pins issued here in Orange for the past week. And, and most of those are for failure to comply with stay at home orders. Um, I guess, can you just tell me what, what are your thoughts on those numbers and, you know, what is being done, you know, with police to you know, police those things? I and mean, could you also just explain sort of what, um, you know, what a failure to comply with stay at home order you know, might mean exactly? Are those people who are self-isolating and then leaving the house or? Yeah, well, it's, it's both, Riley. Those that uh, are under a health order, you know, they might be a close contact, for example, in, in order to remain at home, or it could be just your general um, uh, stay-at-home orders which are in place right across regional New South Wales. Uh, they are the concerning ones, as I said, probably fa uh, face mask compliance is something that has um, uh, improved in terms of we haven't issued as many tickets, but the stay-at-home uh, breaches are of concern, particularly when we see cases in Orange, so the local police have certainly ramped up there. But again, uh, it, it is, and how we come about those? Well, um, people would be amazed how many people ring Crime Stoppers as well. You know, it's, it's uh, compliance checks that we're doing uh, for those that are supposed to be staying at home in accordance with the health orders. But we receive a lot of calls, uh, both local police stations and Crime Stoppers, uh, from members of the community who are simply concerned and uh, they want to get out of lockdown and they're uh, virtually dobbing other people in. And, um, uh, you know, we, we act a lot on that. So uh, it's not just police coming across you. It's not just as a result of compliance checks, um, which are very proactive, but it's also calls that we receive from Crime Stoppers. So it's a, a multitude, but 30 is 30 too many. Um, and it's just concerning to see that uh, there's a little bit of an increase there, Riley, within Orange at the moment. Okay, cheers for that. Thanks, Riley. Does anyone else have any questions for Brett? So the answer there is no. Thank you very much, Brett. We'll, um, bring Thank you. Google forward. <coughs> Emily Wheeler from Day Liberal. Hello, Dougal. Um, just in regards to the announcement uh, this morning about the the plan to get kids back to school, back to face to face learning, how does that um, translate for Dubbo and for regional New South Wales? Could will we be in line with the state plan? Is there a possibility that we could be going back earlier? Uh, look, thanks, Emily. Uh, look, at the, at the moment, the the plan is a statewide plan, but there will be there will be different scenarios for different places, I think, including ours. Um, we're in a situation now where, you know, we've got over 300 cases now and we're looking for ways to move forward. Uh, there is still a, a, a plan to have people back at schools and particularly uh, children learning at school because we know that it's having an impact uh, not just only, only on the children but also on parents trying to, to do the, the learning from home. So, look, I've, I've spoken to the Education Minister, I'll speak to her again today around refining and how that might look, uh, but it's not just a one-size-fits-all across the state. There will be some, some little bits of manoeuvring that are done to make sure that things work at a local level as well. On that, Dougal, do do, it sounds like it's a possibility that we could start later than the October 25 date. Yeah, look, I, th I think, and look, the Deputy Premier made it fairly clear sort of yesterday afternoon, uh, Dubbo in this region is unlikely to be coming out of any stay-at-home order, you know, by September 10, which is two w the two-week um, extension that, that the rest of the state has got. Um, and I guess that's signalling from him that, that we are probably in it for a longer term. Given where we are, that makes sense, I think, to most people. Now, that doesn't mean it's going to be a, a great thing for a lot of people as well. But with that comes maybe a change in, in schooling. So 
given where we are as a, as a region, and we're talking about the whole Central West and Irana and Far West region, there will be, I think, the need to, to be flexible in those type of scenarios. So we'll look more closely at exactly how that looks in, in collaboration, obviously, with teachers to make sure we get the best possible outcomes. Thank you, Dougal. Thanks, Emily. Thanks, Emily. Hamish from Prime 7. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Dougal. Um, I've been told a fair few people turned up to the test testing site at Pioneer Park earlier this morning, only to, be, only to find out that it has been closed. What do you say to those people um, who had no idea because I only saw a, a Facebook post at 7 o'clock this morning from Western New South Wales Health um, and the communication and side of things. Yeah, look, that's obviously really unfortunate. Um, I'm not sure about a fair few people. One of the reasons that that site was closed is that there really haven't been any people going through there or, or a handful a day. So it was about then deciding to make the, the move to a mobile type operation and also consolidate at the showground. But look, if people have turned up, that's, a, that's really not acceptable. There should have been clear signage. Uh, we'll make sure there is clear signage there to let people know. Um, it really has only happened from this morning, uh, but yeah, we'll make sure there's better messaging around that for, for, for sure. Thanks, Hamish. Does anyone else have any questions for Dougal? Doesn't appear so. Excellent. Thanks very much, Dougal. We'll Thanks. Just got back forward and work through everyone one by one for the two questions. Starting with Alex James from ABC Western Plains. Thanks, Matt. Good morning, Scott. Uh, my first question is in relation to healthcare workers that are currently in isolation. It's obviously really good news to hear that a fair few have come out, but what is the plan at the moment to fill those short-term staffing shortfalls? Has the ADF brought forward any offering of nurses or are you going to be pulling people out of retirement? What's your kind of plan here? Oh, so we've got a lot of options to find the additional staff that we're going to need. Um, we do have some additional staff coming in from Sydney, from uh, different parts of Sydney early next week and they'll be uh, incredibly helpful, um, particularly in uh, Bathurst and Dubbo. We're looking for additional staff out in Burke in, in coming days and weeks. Um, we know that we've got a long list of staff that are both uh, registered clinicians in the region and uh, potentially available. Uh, we'll be contacting all of those this afternoon to see if there's uh, anyone interested in, in coming back to, to work for the local health district uh, to help us through this time for all of our communities. I'd like to just follow up to that question before I bring forward my next one. So you mentioned that you're bringing forward staff me. Considering the uh, big concerns around Sydney at the moment, what kind of processes are you going to be putting in place to ensure that not only are those staff safe moving from Sydney out here, but that we're safe as well? Oh, there's absolutely no question. We, we won't compromise on all of the testing and regimes uh, to make sure that anyone comes into our region, particularly into our health services, are safe. And so um, those are all the things that we do for all of our staff on a, on a daily basis as well, the regular rapid antigen testing, the understanding where they've been, um, and, and forward appreciation if there are any uh, close or casual contacts. And so you know, that, that, those are the things we don't compromise on for all of our staff and, and for all of our patients. And you mentioned that 13 of the new cases were infectious in the community. Can you confirm which communities these uh, cases have been infectious in? Yeah, sure. So there was uh, eight in Dubbo, uh, one in Burke, one in Orange, uh, and three in Narromine. That makes up the total of uh, 13. And you didn't mention how many people were in the ICU or on ventilators. Do you have those numbers for us? Uh, yes, I sure do. So uh, we've got uh, five in intensive care and three on ventilators at the moment. Thanks, Alex. Uh, we'll move to Emily from the Daily Liberal. Hello, Scott. Um, just in regards to the age group, the 12 to 15 years, um, I believe they were given the, the green light this morning in my national cabinet. Is there a, a I guess, a, a rollout plan for that particular age group in Dubbo, for example, could parents and uh, their kids at that age go to the, the pop-up clinic from tomorrow? Well, as I understand, the uh, changes that will come into effect from Monday uh, for the Health Direct um, vaccination eligibility checker will open up uh, for the particularly 16 to 39-year-old um, age group to book into either GPs, um, Aboriginal medical services, uh, vaccination hubs or the other vaccination points. 
and we'll um, understand in coming days uh, when and how that'll be enabled for the 12 to 15 year old age group is certainly an age group that we know um, do pick up COVID, do spread COVID and we definitely want to see them vaccinated in our region and so we'll provide more advice on um, now that that's been approved how people can access those services. Okay, thank you. Um, and my other question was in relation to teachers, just again on the announcement about um, the, the plan for face-to-face -face learning. Uh, how will the rollout plan for teachers, I guess, um, Will they be made or are they already, have they already been made a priority to, to get appointments to be vaccinated before they return to schools? Well, there's no shortage of vaccination options around our region at the moment. I know teachers are an absolute priority, like a lot of people in all of our communities. And so I'm going to say to all the teachers, look out for the vaccination opportunities in your community. Uh, we know with, the, with school not sitting face to face at the moment, there'll be some times and difficulties around that. We'll do whatever we can to help uh, help get uh, vaccination in the arms of teachers across the region. Thank you. Thanks Emily. Hamish from Prime 7 Dubbo, do you have anything for Scott? I do, I've got two questions. The first one is, Scott, case numbers in Dubbo um, have really kind of stayed around the mid 20s, yeah. early 30s kind of mark for the past week. Um, these cases aren't going down, why is that? And do you see that as a good thing or a bad thing? Well, Hamish, we know that the um, number of people in isolation with uh, people in the household infectious uh, with COVID will mean that we'll continue to see uh, numbers of cases um, around that level in coming weeks and, and days in, in Dubbo. Um, that, that'll be the case across the whole of the region. We know that people are in isolation with infectious people and they'll um, nearly guaranteed um, pick up this Delta strain. So. I mean, that's not a surprise to see those numbers in Dubbo. The critical thing for us is to get to um, zero people infectious in the community. And so um, those people in the homes, we know that that'll continue. Um, we want to make sure we can get in front of this and stop people picking up the virus and then being in the community for one, two or three days and, and cross infecting other people. And so those stay at home orders and all of the things that we know we've got to do with the mask wearing, with hand hygiene, with social distancing, and particularly the QR code check-ins are just so crucial in stopping those people being infectious in the community and stopping the further spread beyond uh, what we know is coming. And also, yesterday the Deputy Premier mentioned that the case in Parks had no source. Do we know anything further about that case? Well, I haven't got further details on that today. Happy to chase that up offline, but uh, we know that you know, the cases in Parks and Forbes um, have been infectious in the community and so um, to those communities please be very vigilant around any signs and symptoms however mild um, don't hesitate to come forward and get tested at the um, drive through and, and walk-in clinics there. Thanks Hamish. Let's move to Claudia from Prime 7 Orange. Hi Scott. Thanks, Good I'm just wondering if you can further elaborate on the or orange cases, um, whether they're linked to the 7-Eleven or where contact tracing is sort of at at the moment? I haven't got any definite details on those uh, at the moment, Claudia, but uh, we know that um, uh, one of those people was definitely infectious in the community. We're still doing the interviews for three others, and so we'll know more in the next 24 hours um, where those have come from, where they're infectious in the community and uh, what the risk is. And so we'll uh, provide updates on a regular basis if there's any venues of concern or, or other issues that come out of those. Great, thank you so much. And um, we understand that there's a quarantine facility opening up in Bathurst mm. um, soon. Can you talk us through how this is going to work? So one of the most crucial things that's been a real success over the last 12 and 18 months in New South Wales has been our health accommodation to help people stay in a safe place if they've either got COVID already or if they're a close contact and need some accommodation support. And so um, we're looking right across the whole of the region at the needs for those type of facilities. We've already got uh, facilities up and running in Dubbo and Burke. Um, early next week we will see a new facility open up in Bathurst and so um, those are the safe places that we will um, help people find safe accommodation um, if they can't be accommodated in their own home, don't want to cross infect other people in the home or if they've become a, a close contact and need a place to stay um, to save um, becoming infectious and so um, that they're a good step forward. Um, we know that we'll need uh, more of these across the region in coming days and weeks. We've got a specialist team that are helping them 
you know, hotels, motels and, and other venues to you know, assess the facility, help us make sure we've got all of the right things in place to keep people safe with a good clinical team and, and people to provide you know, meals and, and a lot of the other support services to help people stay safe in those environments. If I could please just quickly follow up on that one, what happens to the residents who are already um, inside one of those facilities? We'll do everything we can to, to try and make make sure that there's alternative accommodation for, for those people. And we don't want to see anyone put out, but this is a time for us to really protect you know, the most vulnerable and, um, and people that are infectious with, with COVID. And so, and we understand there'll be some tensions and issues around that. We'll do everything we can to try and try and minimise and help people through that. Thank you so much. Thanks, Claudia. Molly from ABC Central West. Hi, Scott. Um, I was just wondering, in regards to the challenges with people um, being away from work due to exposure to COVID-19, um, and given the wider situation with staffing challenges in um, regional areas and the Western Local Health District, are we already behind in terms of having enough people to cope with the number of people now needing hospital care and potentially down the track? Oh, so we've got 8,000 staff across the whole of the organisation and they're, they're all amazing. Um, so we've got a lot of ability to help people with all of their health conditions and particularly with COVID. Um, so yeah, uh, a number of 80, um, we don't want to see any staff off being in isolation. We don't want to see any staff um, contracting COVID in the community or elsewhere. And so. Um, you know, it's something that we'll continue to monitor. We do have some extra staff coming in uh, from outside of the region. We know that there's people that want to come back and join and, and help out. And so in the next, uh, next 24, 48 hours, we'll have opportunities for that to happen. Just to follow up on that, given the number of cases in Sydney, um, are we almost um, robbing Peter to pay, play Paul? Like, is that gonna have an impact taking staff away from Sydney hospitals to help with our outbreak? Oh, so th there's still parts of Sydney that, um, that don't have capacity and uh, I know there's uh, staff that are willing to come and, come and assist in our region and so we welcome them with open arms. Um, we know that there'll be uh, people offering to come and join from other parts of New South Wales if not other states and so um, we know that uh, with the additional support of the ADF, the OSMAT teams, you know, the RFS and other people coming in, there's a lot of options for us to help you know, build a workforce and, and, and grow the number of people help able to help our region. And just secondly, um, I was curious, have there been any cases or any risks of in-hospital transmission of COVID-19? We've got amazing things in place to keep uh, all of our patients safe in every hospital. Over the last 12 and 18 months, we've learned a lot about you know, the uh, transmission of COVID and particularly all of the things that uh, our staff need to do to make sure that uh, patients with COVID in our facilities are safe and other patients are safe. And so our requirements or things that we do around the personal protective equipment, the um, techniques that all of our staff use and the ability that we've got to you know, contain the air around a, a COVID positive patient and, and those things are all just so crucial. So that's something we don't compromise on and we, we don't want to see anyone um, uh, become infected at work um, or other patients. And so we'll continue to do everything we can to make sure that happens. So has there been any cases or situations of that occur for sure yet? Uh, no, we haven't seen any uh, cross infection between patients in, in our hospitals. Thank you very much. Thanks, Molly. Bradley from the Western Advocate. Hey, Scott. Um, I just want to ask about some of the venues of concern in Bathurst. So I think you mentioned there was eight for Bathurst. The, the health website uh, mentioned there was nine um, on the website this morning. We had a contact from one of the, the venues, Capital Chemist, saying that um, they've basically been in contact with police and health and that they shouldn't be up there anymore. Are you able to confirm whether that's the case or not? Well, so we're continually updating the venues of concern. Uh, the, the big uh, number that were updated overnight um, have been identified as a place where we know someone was at um, given their QR code check-ins or our contact tracing teams uh, following up with them. If that changes, then you know, someone's come back to us with some different information, then we'll continue to update that. Yep, okay. And um, I asked about it yesterday, I was someone asked again about the, uh, the at-home testing uh, that you were talking about bringing in to, to Bathurst. Has there been any further update? Do we have a date on when that'll start? Uh, yeah, as I announced earlier, um, we uh, will have that up and running from tomorrow. We've got a team dedicated to going into homes 
in Bathurst and we'll have some more information about how um, people access that uh, later on today. All right, thank you. Thank you, Bradley. Let's go to Riley from the Central Western Daily. Cheers for that. Um, you touched on it a little bit earlier, you know, with teachers and, you know, work bonus extension. Um, but, you know, mental health is obviously a big part of this lockdown as well. And I guess what would you say to the parents, I guess, who's now going to be, you know, homeschooling for a while and, you know, be teachers for, you know, weeks or months now? Mm. Well, listen, this has been an incredibly stressful time for uh, for all of our community, um, for you know, parents, for kids and, and whole families. Um, this is time to look after each other, um, care for each other. I know for kids uh, that normally you know, love just running around a, a, a playground, um, catching up with their mates, it's been difficult to not be able to do that, um, to have to communicate a lot, a lot through electronic you know, means. And we know that that's a, a bit of the way of the world today, but um, I know for my own daughter Jennifer, who really misses catching up with her friends face to face, it's it's a hard time. And so for parents, I think the best thing we can all do is appreciate and understand the difficult time our kids are going through, and help them support and understand what's going to happen. Um, we're not certain on on when the stay at home orders and things will change with kids being able to go back to school, but help you know, keep them up to date with uh, with what's happening now, what we know, um, and what might come. So there's no surprises. But you know, I think if there's any need or opportunity to reach out for mental health support, please don't hesitate. There's a lot of organisations and people available to support in a, in a difficult time, and particularly for kids. If, uh, if any of our kids are struggling, then um, that there's a lot of opportunity for, for kids to receive some of that mental health support. Okay, cheers. And the other question I had, um, obviously we've seen a bit of a small cluster you know, these last couple of days in orange of COVID. Um, I guess what I guess with the chances, you know, something like this, the way you know testing's being done in Orange, still somewhat, you know, comparatively high numbers compared to with the rest of the West. Um, is what's the chance that like something could break out here in Orange, like we're seeing in Dubbo now? Anyway, I think absolutely, we've got a really high risk in in Orange and in Bathurst with the number of people that have been infectious in the community. This is not time to mess around. This is time to be very vigilant. If you've got any signs and symptoms, however mild, don't hesitate for a second to come and get tested. If you've come and got been tested already, you've got signs and symptoms come on, then come back again. Um, you really want to get in front of this before we do end up in a situation like uh, like Dubbo is at the moment. So please don't hesitate, and particularly for some of the communities surrounding Orange and Bathurst, we know that there's people coming in and out of town uh, from time to time. It's not just about those towns; it's about any of our communities right across the region. Um, COVID can creep around any of our streets, any of our houses, any day of the week. And so don't hesitate, don't mess around with it. Come and get tested if you've got any signs and symptoms. Right, cheers for that. Thanks, Riley. Let's go to Oliver from the Canamble Times. Uh, thanks for that, Matt. I'm just listening in today. Uh, well done on what you guys are doing, though. No worries at all. Thanks very much, Oliver. That looks like everyone well so we'll uh we'll call it a day there and i'll get the recording out to you as soon as possible sorry yesterday about the delay or the technical difficulties that'll that'll come early today thanks very much guys thanks everyone. thanks guys